What's going on guys? Welcome back. Hope you guys are all having a great day. As always, about a week or two ago, I was reached out on Instagram from a friend on the YouTube space, In Move Skates. They basically reached out and said, we're actually the micro skates distributor uh, in the United States. And they wanted to know if I wanted to try a pair. And yeah, here we are. We're sitting next to the micro MT plus skates. Uh, these skates were made famous by you all know Ricardo Lino. Actually really excited to have a pair in my possession now. You know, the skates have made a name for themselves. They are a budget-oriented skate, but they boast a lot of advanced features that you'd find on more higher-end skates. So pretty excited to look these over and give them a shot. Before I move forward on the overview of these skates, I just want to make it totally clear that these were provided for review to me from in move skates and micro though they are given to me for review i still will give you my full 100 percent honest opinion of them so uh let's dive right in you know the first time i saw these micro skates on ricardo lino's channel i believe that was the first place i saw them i was thinking wait micro hold on is that the scooter company that my three-year-old is in love with as well as all of her friends. It's like sweeping the nation. And sure enough it is. Here's her scooter right here. It's the Micro Mini. Um, these are like the best kids, children's scooters on the market. My thought was interesting. Micro as a company that is well known for those scooters that I just showed you. Uh, Ricardo Lino has moved to skate these um, and work with the company professionally. And so that's what really got me wondering because I know the quality on these scooters, they're pretty good. So that got me wondering like, do they know what they're doing with skates? Let's find out now. So in the box, obviously these skates came in there, but I also just wanna show you real quick what also came. We got a skate tool right here with a grip, really nice to have. I like seeing this much more than just your typical L Allen keys, which, there's too many of them and I keep throwing them away. I, I like a, a skate tool with a grip. The other thing which I have not seen is the little baggies, little booties, if you will, that go over, stretch over the uh, frames of the wheels. So say you're putting these in your bag um, and you got, you know, a bunch of road grime and dust and stuff all over your wheels and you don't want to get the inside of your bag dirty, you just throw these over and throw them in your bag and you're good to go. Really cool right off the bat from Micro right there. So yeah, let's just dive right in, tear down the skate real quick. All right, so straight off the bat, like I always say, uh, the looks, the overall looks, I have to say are, you know, pretty clean. I like the all black on black look of this skate. It does come in three other colors. It comes in a red, a blue, and a yellow. I think this is the coolest model just because I'm a big fan of the black on black. So uh, looks, you're getting a thumbs up for me. Let's just start top down here. So let's start with the cuff. The cuff, nothing too much to write home about. Feels pretty, pretty rigid, pretty stiff. It is a, it is a pretty tall cuff. I really kind of like the lower cuffs, to be honest, uh, a stiffer lower cuff is just my personal preference. But that being said, I think for beginners, this is a good thing. On the cuff here, we have the buckle system. Ooh, that's nice. The first thing I noticed right off the bat is right here has a little button right here. So you can push it in and it unlocks it so it snaps back on here so this thing won't ever pop up when you're skating. Uh, I really like to see that, especially on a, a lower end boot. That's something that you see on my like twister edge boots. Uh, I really like that. The second thing, this buckle right here is a metal buckle. Not even my twister edge buckles are metal and those things are just getting mangled up hardcore. Uh, really like to see metal buckles like this. So right off the bat, these guys are getting some good marks to be honest. Uh, if we flip around to the other side, the strap goes into the cuff, which is always nice to see. Pretty common to see nowadays. The strap itself, eh, it's not the thickest, nicest strap. It's it's probably where they saved a little bit of little bit of money. Next up on the cuff here, if we go down, this looks to be a removable cuff. Yeah, either removable or adjustable. Uh, so that's really cool to see on this on this boot. I believe these come in at. Uh, 199 MSRP US. Other than that, it has a sort of a low V cut in the back, not too much, not that aggressive, but it's there. Yeah, that's the cuff. Let's move on down. 45 degree strap, great to see a 45 degree strap. Very common on skates nowadays, especially urban big wheel skates. 
great thing to have. This is this is pretty much the most important piece of hardware on your skate to keep that foot and heel back and locked in this area of the shell of the boot. And if that heel isn't moving anywhere in that boot, you're getting good good power transfer and you're just in control of that skate. In terms of the ratchet, looks like a nice ratchet metal ratchet. The housing I think is plastic, but the, the, the metal, the ratchet is metal and feels pretty good. The strap, um, about the same as the top strap, not the best, not the worst. Uh, these are also removable, it looks like, so that's a nice, nice touch. If, if for some reason you go down and destroy the strap and you need to replace it, you probably can. The last thing to keep our feet in these boots is the lacing. And these laces are a bit different. If you can kind of see, I know it's black on black and tough to see, but these are super thick and they have like this stitching every so often in the center here. I have never seen, it's almost like they're hollow on the inside. They look to be really high, nice laces. They're not waxed, but they look to be really nice. I, I like the thick width look to them. In my opinion, that's a, a, a great, a great lace. The actual lace eyelets are metal, obviously inlets. It has a bit of a, almost an homage look to the uh, them skates, the aggressive skate, or like an old Bauer skate, how the um, eyelets kind of come up like this. That's gonna give you just a little bit more on a hard shell, you don't get a lot, but if you're pulling on those really hard on those uh, on those laces, it might be able to just give you just that much more closure like this as I'm pushing together. So for a narrow foot, you might get a millimeter or two more of closure by really pulling on those laces tight. If we move down here, the actual shell, um, there's a little bit of air ventilation on the side, which is nice to see. You are taking off some weight of the skate, but the more you take off, in this shell boot area, uh, it's making the structure weaker. So the power transfer all through the skate is, is potentially gonna be worse than it would if it was just all closed off. So there's something to think about. Next thing down, uh, we have the slide plate. Very common to see on a urban skate because when you go down, you slide on that guy and you're not tearing up the side of your, the shell of your boot which is nice and you can remove it and replace them. So if you chew through that one too much, you can always put a new one on and keep this boot looking like new. All right, next thing. Let's head on down to the frames, wheels and bearings. The frame right here, uh, full metal frame, nice to see. The frame is a 243 millimeters in length, which is a very, very common four by 80 uh, frame length. Catches a bunch of size of foot, plus it, it kind of is good for the most amount of different types of skating. It's, it's just kind of the go-to sizing for a frame on a 4x80 or on a big wheel skate nowadays. Let's see here, we are looking at race axles. You only need one Allen key to take off and put back on your wheels. As you can see on the other side, you don't have a keyhole, it's just the, the threads on the frame, so it's just one-sided. It makes for really quick changes of your wheels. I'm not sure if there's any metal in these standoffs in the boot for uh, power transfer to, to like really keep these really solid, the connection points right here. The next thing down, let's see here. Let's take a look at these wheels. The wheels look really sick. I love this matte black look. I love black wheels when they're new. Graphic treatments on them, they look sick. They're 80 millimeter. I don't know the actual durometer of them. I will put that on the screen because it doesn't say on the wheels here. That these are the Street Fusion Fashion, Fusion Fashion. Street fashion? Street fashion wheels. And then inside these wheels are some ABEC 5 bearings. Nothing to write home about. That's another probably cost saving area. I wish they had, you know, some sevens in them at least. But, you know, like I said, they are trying to target more of a budget market and give you as much as they can for that budget. So maybe it was a good decision to, to just go with ABEC 5s. I think that's everything on the outside of the boot. I'm gonna go ahead and open these up and let's take a look at the liners and insole. So, liners. First up, we have that low cut, V cut. Not too aggressive on the back here, but it does match the cuff, so that's nice to see. Second up, we have the blade strap to carry it with. This is a pretty thin one. The cuff area is very thick, very stiff in here in this liner. All the way down to basically right around the heel area. So right around this area right here, 
and up is all real thick, dense, heavy foam. So these should be pretty comfy uh, and very supportive. Have a nice little Achilles blocking area in the back there. Looks like they have a nice little heel cup area to lock your heel in. This is pretty cool that they do give you the ability to put laces to really give you that extra support if you want it. Uh, and then it, well, since they did put laces in, it is nice to see this like pleathery stuff around this area because when you're cinching on laces a lot, this stuff's gonna get really rubbed on and torn up really easily. And putting something like that around this area will help keep that those lace holes intact longer. All right, the tongue. So the tongue, there, here you go. This is, this is not the floppiest tongue that I've ever seen, but it's not the best looking tongue. It is a little bit too much material in my opinion going on in the sides here and it just kind of gets all folded and crunched on itself which i i don't like that i'd rather have just a, a thinner stiffer supportive tongue we're missing a, a neoprene toe box would have been nice to see uh, for you know in between sizes so that the toes could kind of stick wherever they want to and then here is our our shock absorber right here not too much shock absorption going on here just some dense thin dense foam right here it does have some good grip, so it'll keep that keep that boot from slipping forward and back if there is any room in the in, in the shell. And the last thing I'll take a look at here is the insole. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> All right, so here's the insole. This has got to be probably the least expensive insole I've ever seen. Oh, it just doesn't make me want to skate on them. <laughs> I am going to skate these exactly how they come out of the box, but ouch is all I have to say. Yeah, they do have a little bit of heel shock absorption right going on right here, but there's there's nothing. I mean, this stuff, this is just a flat. I think my feet might start hurting uh, during my skate. The good news though, these are an inexpensive skate. If you spend all of 10 to 20 more dollars on a Dr. Scholl's or something off your corner store that you know you really enjoy and fit your foot, the form of your foot, get another insole and just throw these in there. Just, just do that for yourself if you're gonna buy this skate. Buy another insole. I always say a decent footbed will let you skate so much longer than something like this where it's like literally no support, no padding, no comfort, nothing. All right, I think I went through everything Thanks for sticking with me. I know these overviews can go pretty long, but I just like to be as detailed as possible so that if you're out there shopping for them, you can watch this video and tr hopefully basically see the skate in real life without seeing the skate in real life. I'm gonna shut up now. Uh, I'm gonna put these skates back together. I'm gonna slap them on my feet. It's nice outside. We're gonna go for a roll, so let's do this.
So what do I think of these skates? Well, let's find out, starting with the pros. So for that first pro, it's gotta be the fact that these skates come in at $200 or less US. That's just a great price for everything you're getting here, in my opinion. That leads me into the next pro. This skate really offers some high-end features that you wouldn't find on any other budget skates. Some of those features include the top strap buckle, uh, it's all metal, both metal, both buckles, 45 and top strap are metal. But also on top of that top strap buckle, the cuff buckle, uh, it has a little button uh, locking lever mechanism um, that's shared, that is the same thing that's on my tw high-end Twister Red skates. And that is amazing to find on a skate that is sub $200. Uh, the next kind of high-end feature is just the fact that these cuffs are removable or tightenable. A lot of the more budget or lower end skates, you'll just have them riveted on. Uh, so you can't remove them, replace them, or tighten them up um, if you know that, that hardware gets a little loose. The third thing in that high end features pro is the fact that the liners are quite high end. Like they're just really solid and well constructed. Uh, no, they're not the best liners in the world, but they're one of the better liners I've seen in a low or entry level boot. And then the last thing, the wheels and bearings, while they're not the best or anything to really write home about, the wheels perform really well and the bearings were really surprising for an ABEC 5. I felt like I could really get going and hold a pretty good coast on those ABEC 5 bearings. I was really worried about that. So the next pro, it's gotta be the fact that these skates are super lightweight. Uh, it might just be the fact that I am so used to rolling on much bigger frames and setups, uh, you know, like 4x90, 4x100, 3x125s, you know. So maybe the fact that these are just 4x80, I haven't been on them for so long that they just feel like slippers. <laughs> like they feel like nothing on my feet, uh, which is just a great thing, especially when you're getting into this, um, just to have a skate that is you know, you feel like you can control it a lot easier when it's not so heavy. And the next pro, uh, it's gotta be the laces and lacing system. So the laces are something I've never seen before, but they're really wide and thick and they're not like the normal woven with laces. They're kind of like this like hoop or like ring type stuff with like stitches and in the center of it, like every inch or so. They're really heavy duty. They're not waxed, but I could really cinch them down and get a, get a good, you know, pull on them. And it, it feels like they're high quality and they're not, gonna ever really snap on you. So that's awesome for the laces. Number two, the lacing system. I kind of talked about how it had that like almost old Bauer skate or them aggressive skate, you know, design where the lace holes are. And that really helped, especially for me having a, a, a narrow foot um, and low volume foot to really close the top of that shell up, the hard shell together, get those few more millimeters of tightness around that forefoot. That really made these skatable for me. If that didn't happen, I felt like I would be kind of all over the place with my foot in this forefoot uh, of, this, of this boot. So that was really cool to me. And for that last pro, it's gotta be the fact that these are durable and extremely supportive. Uh, the durability factor just comes because it's a hard shell boot for the most part, uh, you know, metal frames, you know, these, these are, these will take a beating. That also goes into the second point of this, which is the extreme support. So those cuffs uh, are very stiff as well as really tall. So if you really need that, that ankle and like higher end or higher leg support when skating, these are a great skate for you. So that's all the pros. Let's check out the cons. So for that first con, it was a pro, but the cuff for me at least is just a little too tall and stiff. I guess maybe because I'm more used to a lower, you know, stiff supportive cuff, kind of like my twisters, but these are very tall. It just feels like they come up so far on your leg that you can't get that like forward flex feeling. It just feels weird a little bit, um, as well as when I'm you know, forward flexed a lot, it's pushing up against my shin and, and kind of after a while started not feeling so great about uh, the pressure on my shin, like higher up. So I don't know if it's just me or just, I just am not a huge fan of really tall cuffs, uh, especially when they're super stiff. Yeah, it just, it felt very restricting, especially when I was doing like all those jumps and more kind of urban trick maneuvers. It, it felt very weird. It felt like I was kept pushing me back in the back seat because I couldn't land and be forward. Um, I would land and then it would kind of like, I couldn't 
flex forward enough so like kind of throw me back in the back seat a little bit and that's not where you want to be when you're doing jumps and tricks and stuff and even when i was just skating it felt like i was i couldn't stay you know forward in a forward stance as i'm going as easy with these so the next con the straps the buckles on the straps excellent metal beautiful great stuff but the straps they used are quite thin i i just don't know i just I like a strap like that just has a little bit of meat to it, so it just feels it just feels like it's not gonna like wear out over time and, and start slipping on you. So the next con, these don't have any metal blocks in the connection points in the, the soles of the boots, so that you know they could have been a little bit of flexing. Just made it's not bad. It's it's a it, it still has good power transfer, and for m most of your skating, it's gonna be totally fine. It just I found it just maybe ever so slightly malleable in a way. All right, and for our last con, you guys probably guessed it. I kind of went off in the overview already, but that is just the fact that the insoles and the uh, shock absorption pads are like barely there. I mean, it's like, you might as well not even add that to the skate. I, I mean, yeah, it's such a small thing, but to me, I think an insole and shock absorption is pretty important. Uh, for comfort and longevity of skating. That being said, you can always go out to your corner store or somewhere and just grab for all of 10 to $20 a set of halfway decent insoles that fit your foot and your arch and, and you know give you some more shock absorption in the heel and slip them in these liners. I would highly recommend if you're planning on buying these, go ahead and either order some insoles or go out and purchase some right away. So who are these skates for? Well, I believe these skates are for pretty much any skater of all, any skill level uh, that has a standard to wider foot, just wants a kind of best bang for the buck uh, all around skate that you can just go charge the streets with. Who are they not for? I'm gonna go ahead and say the inline skater with a narrow foot that has maybe more of a budget to spend on their inline skates and, and wants to invest in uh, higher end gear. So that's my final thoughts. If you have a standard to wide foot and you're on a budget, but are looking for, you know, not too much compromise on your skate, these might be the ones for you. As for sizing, if you're getting these skates, the sizing is a bit weird. You will be sizing down on these skates. For best fit, I recommend just measuring your foot uh, in millimeters and then going to their sizing chart and just looking at that, that sizing chart in millimeters and making sure you get the closest size skate to your foot size. So in the end, I had a ton of fun on these skates. As you can see, they were quite versatile. Uh, I took them all over the town and even stopped at my local skate park and made a few laps. The only things that really would keep these from being my, I guess, go-to daily roller skate would be the fact that one, the cuff is really super tall and I just really didn't like that. It just, just felt like it was kept pushing me back a bit, you know, like keeping me up straight and, and not letting me be more in that aggressive like predator position uh, without, I could do it, but it with, you had to really push on it hard and then it just starts digging into your shins higher up really weird. So that I wasn't too much of a fan of. Uh, the second thing is the fact that the skates are really for a wider foot and a more full volume foot than myself, which I think will fit a lot more people out there on the market, which is totally fine just not for me. Uh, I just had a little bit too much movement in my forefoot, which I don't like when I'm, you know, trying to be precise with movements uh, on wheels. It makes me feel more secure when everything's tight. Uh, and the last thing, this is weird. These are a raised heel skate, a 165 mount skate, which means, you know, the, the forefoot is lower than the heel area on the skate. When you're skating these skates, these almost feel like you're skating a flat, um, say aggressive UFS boot they don't feel like you have that little bit of like raised heel uh, angle to them, which is great for a lot of people. But for me personally, and I can fix this with an insole that really kind of gets me that more angle, which I'll probably do, but skating stock, it really felt pretty flat. My foot felt pretty flat instead of like kind of raised a bit. Like I'm used to skating like my twisters, my rosies, you know, that's the kind of skate I like to skate, the classic 165 raised heel boot but these felt flat and when it when you feel flat and you're used to skating something like that's angled especially combine it with that tall cuff 
it, I, I felt like I was falling backwards on my heels constantly when I was landing tricks on these. Anyway, that's the third thing. It's just the fact that they feel very flat and not like a, a typical 165 mount boot. But I can totally fix that, which I will, which put, is gonna give me more comfort, more shock absorption as well by putting uh, a new insole in them. So that's it. Uh, if you guys have any questions about these skates, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I am always here and try to answer as many questions as possible. I'm not a mind reader. I can't foresee your questions and, and what you guys really want to know about these skates. I just try to do a basic covering in these reviews and you know let the questions come in and I do my best to, to answer all that I can. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you ring that bell so you miss any of these uploads. And until next time, guys, just keep rolling.